Uh, good afternoon, uh, officially. I'm Vigosi. I'm the, ch the chair of data science at, in the computer science department. Uh, this is the first time giving a presentation like this, so slightly um, nervous and anxious. Uh, but I wanted to talk about uh, uh, two pieces of technology that are connected to Python, uh, one being NB Grader and the uh, other one being Streamlit. So NB Grader for uh, building online assessment that is on top of coding and that could automatically grade for you, but then get students to have scaffolding so they can build very complex, actually, assignments uh, by build, having scaffolding. And then Streamlit, when you get students to work on projects, uh, they can then focus on the methods or the algorithms or the things you want them to learn, and then they can actually build quick proof of concept uh, tools that they can actually give uh, to other people. So this is through three courses uh, uh, that I teach, one being MIT 804, which is optimization for the big data science masters, and be greater for that, COS 802, which is natural language processing for uh, data scientists, and then M MIT 808, um, the, which is the big data science capstone. I will I'll make sure I think. So let's start with Jupyter Notebooks and NB Grader. Um, so Jupyter, uh, Jupyter is an environment that gives you almost like notebooks that you can build your Python programs on. So instead of writing code and then getting it to run, you get the notebook, and then from the notebook you can run it cell by cell on that. I'll, I'll give an uh, NB Grader runs on top of that. What it allows you to do is that you can set homeworks or assignments where you remove pieces of code and then you require the students then to fill in the missing pieces by themselves. So you can test for specific concepts that they understand them, and then they write the code for that uh, on there. And then what you can do is that you can do auto grading for some parts of it. So you can have tests that run once they submit back the notebooks. Or you can also have manual grading where you look at their writing. So they, 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 they evaluate something, they look at an experiment, they run it themselves, and then after that, they, they then talk about what they were actually able to see. So uh, the reason I had to use my own computer is that I'm going to try this thing of doing live demo, which is always, always very dangerous. Um, and this part, so this is what NB Grader looks like. So this is for MIT 804. You see I had one homework, which was um, in five parts. The nice thing about, I like about NB Grader, I teach the MIT in big data science. We typically have, let's say, block lectures, one lecture a month. But the students in between the lectures have five assignments that they have to work on every week. They're submitting something um, on there. So that's just how the view is from NB Grader. Now here's the homework. So we're just starting off. This one is, hey, for the students are coming from different faculties and different backgrounds. So how do you introduce them to Python and get them to focus on the concepts, on the algorithms, as opposed to the code, right? So this is supposed to be the, the first uh, assignment that just gets them comfortable with the environment of using um, um, uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And it goes through, you can see, you write little, nice little notes for them of what's, what, what are they going to be doing in this homework. Uh, they're going to be learning about some packages, which is NumPy, which is new, for, for numerical um, computing in Python. And then uh, we generate some data uh, for them. And then here on this section, hey, there's a fitness function that they must take a thing. So they're trying to do an optimization. So they have to write a fitness function uh, that is described here mathematically. Um, on here, they have to write it in code. Right? And you can see here it says begin solution. Uh, in, when this notebook gets converted into the homework, it removes this piece there. The student has to be the one that actually writes it out. And then after that, uh, they then also have to, um, there's, they'll have some tests that they can see, uh, just to say, if you write the fitness function correctly, these tests should pass. If they don't pass, there's something wrong, go fix it. But there's also hidden tests that I've written for myself. So, like, you know, they can't, um, go and hard code a solution <laughs> because my, my tests will run separately um, on there and then those will also be hidden uh, on that part. And it goes in, you can do things like visualizations so it shows if they've written the thing correctly, it will visualize it and then show it to, it keeps on giving them feedback. So 
to that conversation about memos and not memos. In this case, at least, they kind of construct the memo themselves as they're going through um, uh, the homework. And then finally, they write their first algorithm. So you see, this is a very big chunk of code, but then they are going to focus on one part. Um, they, they will have a description. Uh, that goes before here of what they're supposed to be, what's the input, what are they supposed to then do uh, on that part, and then there'll be parts that they have to then write themselves um, on this part as the first scaffolding. So if they finish the first assignment, they should be comfortable with, I need to abstract away the code, I don't need to worry about Python, I just need to understand the, con the mathematical concepts and then I implement them on, on, on that part. So this we've done, uh, sorry, now we've done the, the, this is the instructor side. Uh, then you press, there's a little button there that says generate the homework. Um, it generates it, and then now this is what it looks like. So they'll put in their name, they'll put in their student number, and then if we scroll down, these parts were there, you'll see, it'll say your code here, right? And then they'll have to write um, that code themselves on, on that part. It will only show them our, the, the test functions, the three, the other ones now are hidden. They won't see it. They finish this, they, they send it back to me. I then, uh, then do, uh, do grading. Um, sorry, let me just quickly try to remember. Uh, so what they get, uh, for example, this is on ClickUp. Uh, hey, um, here's the homeworks. This was part one and part two. Some instructions on how to run it. They can run it locally on their own computer, or they can use Jupyter, I'm sorry, uh, Google Colab. So Google has a free environment that runs on their own virtual machines on this part. So this now reduces the point of you need to have a very powerful computer. You basically just need to have a web browser. As long as a student has a web browser and they're on the internet, they can then do the homework from anywhere and on this part. And Google's environment is a standard data science environment, so almost all the, pack all the packages that I, we need are already installed. They just need to open it. It starts up a little virtual machine and then they, they go. So what does this look like? Um, that's like, we're really gonna be going live. Um, now, um, they get access to this folder on our Google, um, Google Drive infrastructure here at the university, and then you can then just go in and say, oh, I just want to open with, and you'll say, it'll say Google Collaboratory. That's a Google Colab environment. It's already integrated. I didn't need to do any extra things on there. When that opens in Google Colab, that's what it looks like. Exactly the same thing as what I had on NB Grader, but now it's running on Google's infrastructure. Right, so they can run this, you can just click here. Oh, okay, I should not do that. Uh, connect, and it'll allocate a new machine somewhere in the world, I don't know where, and then it will say we're running. And that's it, like uh, once it's connected, they can then go through, and they've got a whole Python environment that's already on the internet that they can use. Um, yeah, it'll say, it'll say initializing, and then connected. Uh, on there, they can do the homework in here. Once they have finished r r running everything, they just say download as IPYNB. On ClickUp, they just submit that file into, uh, into ClickUp. I download that file, uh, which now. <laughs> um, I download that file and then I run I, all, all the, the whole, from ClickUp I download all of the assignments. Um, there's a bit of fuzzy ma matching of the, the name, they have to, uh, um, does it write the file name in a specific way? I run the autograde, the autograder checks, it knows, here's a student number, gets that, the date, and then which assignment it was. From there, it runs the autograder, this is just an example, MB grader, autograde homework 3-1, it goes through all of the assignments where there's tests, runs the hidden tests, <laughs> and actually reruns everything, and then from there, it, I go back to, um, this in, oh, sorry, let me just check. Um, it then gives you an interface where it says, oh, do you want to now provide the mark? So for the ones where it uh, did test and there was a mark, it will automatically give them a mark. Then there's gonna be places where it says I have to manually mark, meaning that I've either asked them to discuss something that they've seen and then I'll put in, um, I'll give them a grade and then either write notes on, their, on that part. So I could see their code, then they've had a failure and then I can write a note there saying, oh, this is why you had a mistake here um, on, uh, on that part. So here they've written their solution to <laughs> the thing. Uh, you can see there's a little bit more. Mine was one line, but they wrote it in three. That is fine. It passes the test <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it were. And then uh, my hidden tests now also run in the autograder um, on, on that part. So, so that's, that's another part. So though, like, you know, this is very nice. Um, and and it, it really, for me, 
um, has made it easier to provide homeworks in this space of we have a master's program that's through Bullock Lectures, but I don't need to focus on the classes, those one hour as being the place where they learn. The students actually spend most of their time learning in between the lectures by having access to these and actually going through all these concepts. And this, like for example, this is for Course 802, which is a natural language processing one. You can see we have like a one hour engagement and then they always have an activity that they then have to do afterwards. And this activity is literally every week on ClickUp automatic, hey, here's your next section of the homework. Here's your next section on the homework. And or what I've noted is that the students now are like very much looking forward to the notebooks. Because now in the class, I go through kind of the intuition of a lot of the, the, the approaches and the methodologies that we use in the area. And then in the homeworks, they get to actually implement and try them out and like you know, explore how they break them and also then come up with new ideas to the point where yesterday we were having the exhibition for Cos 802. So the students actually did projects um, themselves and then the thing, and this is one of the students who said like, you know, really uh, the notebooks were great for uh, uh, um, the learning the practical in such a way that they could now do research level projects for COS802, all right? So uh, you can actually go to this website, I'll have the website, and see there's 13 presentations. All of them, I was actually amazed um, at the level. And this has been building up for the last three years now, saying if we get the notebook, notebooks right, the students become very comfortable in now asking research questions, right? The practical part is now abstracted away. It's think about the research that you want to do and then continue on that. Now, um, so yeah, that's, that's NB Grader, and then yeah, if people want to talk about that any, any time, I'm very open, because <laughs> there are um, maybe ideas of how we can work with IT team at university to make it easier to integrate with Blackboard and everything. At the moment, I do everything literally on my laptop, and it's, it's yeah, a few extra steps that are in there. The other part now is just imagine the students do the methods, they, they come up with an idea, how do you get them to build something that can be prototypal and given to a third person? On this part. And this is where now I want to talk about Streamlit. So Streamlit, again, it's another Python tool, and it allows you then to deploy almost web apps with just one line, right? So it's almost like you install, pip, install Streamlit, and then Streamlit, you run your app, and, and that's it. What does this, like, why is this important? I go to MIT A2H, which is our big data science capstone project uh, for our masters in big data science. So in masters in big data science, these are all of our partners. These are um, uh, e different EBIT um, and, and NAS uh, departments that are working uh, uh, with us. Um, and they then either have their own um, elective courses or have uh, specific research that they want to do within these spaces. In year one of the masters, it's classes that provide the core skills and they do some electives from advanced and then the preparation for research. In the second year, there's two parts. A capstone project where the students take everything they've learned in year one into an end-to-end, -end, starting with the problem all the way to providing a solution on there. And then they have a mini dissertation, which is the research project. So we're gonna focus on the capstone project. So in the capstone project, um, the way we designed it is the students have to work with a partner who comes most of the time from inside the university who's interested in a data science approach to a problem that they have. So one of the big partners we have is Fabi. So I'll give an example, Fabi. We want to be able to identify if a forest has an infestation of uh, specific beetles. What we have is satellite imagery. We have a lot of satellite imagery. We have specific with timestamp and we know when there was an infestation and not. How can we use machine learning or AI to be able to identify this automatically? That was the question. The students will get that question, get the raw data and have to work for three months to come up with a solution, right, on, on that part. So they have to kind of, but so the thing that Fabi wants or needs really is the proof of concept. They don't want the finicky, here's like, you know, how the algorithm works inside. But the students will work on that. And that's why kind of we use Streamlit. So these are, um, if you go on, on each of these links, you can then find the exhibitions of the different projects okay, um, um, on that part. So in the data science process, I'll use this one, you typically have to go through all those different pieces, and then the part that we're very interested in is in the presentation, the proof of concept tool on there. And as such, Streamlit allows us then to build on um, some of these. So for example, this is just one project uh, I worked on with some students at the CSIR. It will, the students have, um, We've built some machine learning models, and in these machine learning models, 
um, you load your model, and then it has to classify something, uh, a piece of text. So if that sorry, uh, works uh, correctly, you then have a news classifier that's on here, and, and then you can paste text inside there, and it will classify the news. This one is in Setswana or Sepedi on that part. But then in the background, they worked on the models, and they built the models, and now you have a web app. In the same way, with MIT 808, uh, we had students who then built a system for COVID-19, I think news classification, sorry, as I said, live demos. Um, and in the same way, they build a thing, they put it inside a GitHub repo, I'll show it to you. It runs the system and it gets it to run and then it builds a web app very quickly. The students can focus just on building their methods and sorting out what they need to sort out and sorry, okay, now. Um, as just Python code, but then this then converts it into a web application as they need. Then what they do is they provide GitHub um, repos that then, for example, this one here, where it's, it describes the project, they've worked um, kind of on their data, their notebooks that they've built during the time, any other code, and then they have the Streamlit application that's on there, and you will see they will have, um, hey, here's how you get the Streamlit application to work, and then this one also has a nice little video that shows you how the Streamlit actually, um, and it's a, a, a GIF, um, that shows you how that Streamlit application actually works on that part. So you can go from, the methodology, the algorithm, and the approach, and all the way to a web app that they can then give to another department, and they can test it out and go like, oh, this actually solves our problem. And if that department now wants to or go apply for grant funding or get funding from a partner to say, let's actually get software developers to go through there, you've now transitioned from just the data scientists, but then moving into something that can then expand the, the thing. But then this is also built around teaching and learning from the students themselves. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, with this um, fantastic work that I don't see too many questions. Um, anybody? There is a question. Thank you so much. So first of all, because I've sent you a connection right now, thank you. I need to ask something. In terms of the setup, let's talk about uh, return on investment, cost-benefit analysis, in terms of just give us some insight into that preparing all of this in all of these environments in the current times. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if I go back, the first, I think, with MIT before we started, for, for NB grade, I was three years ago. At that time, yeah, coming up with the first homeworks was tough. Um, and because I was thinking about it, I spent some time doing my PhD shadowing the vice president at Rutgers University who was thinking about Coursera and um, uh, Udacity at the time. They use similar, they have their own notebook system on that part. So I knew how the systems work, but then coming up with the homeworks is not easy. Mm -hmm. So it meant going in and actually taking some of these classes myself uh, that are on these other platforms and going, oh, this is how you come up with. And there's, an there's a community now. You can sign up for mailing lists of people who are trying to use NB Grader and all those ways. But since then, the year-to-year -year investment is zero. <laughs> Uh, all I need to like, even though I showed you like one of the assignments, I change the I change the function every year, so it's not the same one. They can't, they you you know yeah, the function is easy. You're just changing a, a mathematical equation, and they have to program it. I test it, and you're gone, and you move on. For the cos802 with this, the NLP one, that's a little bit tougher because the methods are much more computationally um, um, expensive, so they have to use Google's one, they have to use GPUs, and that one is a harder to change, but it's my research area, so that cost I take it almost as, as zero. It means I learn a new thing every year that I need to go in, and then they, they play around with GPUs. Uh, Streamlit, it's completely to the students. So what tends to happen is that the students have to either to use Shiny in R, or they use Streamlit in Python. So I've liked Python because then once it's done, it's easy to package, and Streamlit just got a lot of money uh, to actually do this because they've become such a big, like a big company, even though it's completely open source. Uh, they've become a big company and they've got a lot of money to keep on doing this because it allows data scientists to interact with almost the rest of a business 
without being showing, you know, we, we like the technical stuff. We want to show them the nice little business doesn't care. <laughs> and in the same way, science doesn't care, right? Science is like, okay, can you show us ultimately what we can do in our science? And that's why with MIT 808, I, we found it that it's a great opportunity for the rest of the university to experience data science in their space because the students are required to transfer that. So there, the students are the ones who deal with the setup, but it's part of the class that they have to actually do. So we don't, we just give them like a, I think an over, like some links to, here's how to learn about Streamlet or to learn about Ashani. They work on it themselves.